Good morning, I'm Jade Nicole. Thank you for joining me for another edition of Republic Affairs Program. Keep in mind that the ideas discussed and the views expressed during this segment do not necessarily represent Town Square Media, any of its subsidiaries or affiliates. And joining me this morning is Terry Roller, who is the High School Director of Tuscaloosa City Schools. Good morning. Good morning, Jade. How are you? I'm great. And yourself? Doing well. Great. Glad to have you with me. Um, I was made aware of a new program in Tuscaloosa City Schools that will help students or those who should have been students um, continue their education if they stopped at some point. Can you tell us about it? Absolutely. And, you know, really this program that we're doing, our virtual program, is, is something that will benefit all types of students. Mm -hmm. um, you know, the traditional way that we've done school, uh, really doesn't work as well as we uh, initially designed it for and we've been practicing doing. Um, uh, now 21st century expectations drive everything including uh, public education. So this program that we're doing uh, is really in an attempt to get ahead of the law that was passed. Um, it was a, a bill introduced uh, this summer and passed and the governor signed it in and every public school's got to have a virtual program by the 16-17 school year and I've had some experience doing this in North Alabama and some other places have already started and I thought you know in Tuscaloosa we can go ahead and get ahead of the game and and start meeting the needs and serving students uh, with this non-traditional education set up and basically every student that is accepted into the program in Tuscaloosa City Schools uh, will receive a Chromebook and be able to access their curriculum and do all of their coursework online. Uh, you know, we can have some blended models and we can have, uh, eventually our goal is to have a standalone center where students can come in and receive support during the day. But what I want you to envision, Jade, is a student that uh, perhaps had to come out of school to go to work to be part of a contributing factor in his, his family's income, working uh, a schedule during the day, and then taking classes online at night, uh, interacting with teachers, and being able to get the same thing that he would have gotten had he been in a traditional 8-3 to three school setup. Uh, so it's just a fantastic program. It's a great opportunity. Uh, any student can do it. And, and one example I want to share in particular, we have some students in our district that participate in some sports, uh, whether it be pre-Olympic swimming or gymnastics, that have an incredibly rigorous training regimen uh, that requires that they do training during the morning, uh, two and three hours a day. Then after school, they go back and train. This is perfect for them uh, because they can train at their coach's leisure and then do their academics and their coursework when it's convenient for them. It allows them to travel and do all the things that they need to do. So this really is a new way of looking at an old practice of educating students and, and really creating it to meet the personalized needs of all the students. This is almost like online college. Absolutely. So one of the things that um, we're, we're doing now through the state superintendent's plan, uh, Plan 2020, uh, Dr. Bice wants us to create students that are college and career ready. So if you think about it, uh, the average working person is now exploring opportunities to advance their education online. Mm -hmm. So if we're going to prepare kids to be ready for what they are required to do in their future, this online training is perfect for that. So uh, it's very similar to the platforms you would use in a Blackboard or a Canvas or things like that. And that's mm -hmm. the, the online learning management system. So the students will have experience in that when they graduate from high school. And those are things that they'll do and be expected to do as an adult. Okay, so how will this affect those students that might otherwise um, go to get a GED? Well, and, and that's one of the things, you know, life happens. We, we found that there are five basic types of students and, and really one of the biggest groups of those students are the ones that we're calling operant students. These are kids that basically life has happened. Uh, you know, they're having to go out to work. Uh, there's some other crisis or situation that's disrupted the normal home environment for them. Uh, and this is a great program for them. Uh, we've done things in the past like night school and summer school and things like that for students. But this is just another program that has a great flexibility model that allows the kid to enroll immediately so you don't have to wait for a semester to end. It sort of has a rolling mm. 
uh, a rolling enrollment time. So a kid can start any time. Uh, you're not bound by a school term or, uh, you know, a timeline. And that kid can work from home 24 hours a day. Uh, so it's really just a fantastic opportunity to meet individualized learning expectations and needs for every student. So let's just say there, um, there's a number of students that decide, you know what, I'd like to give this a try. Would that be an issue as far as um, enrollment numbers in the actual school system? Well, let, let me tell you the beauty, and let's use one school in particular. Uh, let's use Central High School, for example. Uh, early college and dual enrollment are currently at the disposal of the kids now. Uh, that starts in grade 10. So a student could theoretically enroll at Central High School, uh, be dually enrolled, taking college courses if they meet the application and the expectations and all those prerequisites, and take their four core classes on campus at Shelton State. So if you're doing that, you're not technically sitting in the classroom at Central, mm -hmm. but you're receiving credit for those classes at Central, you're receiving credit for those classes in community college. Mm -hmm. So students aren't physically bound by chairs. In the past, you know, seat time was the requirement. So basically learning occurred this way. You had time as the constant, learning as the variable. Well, now that equation has shifted. So now time is the variable and learning is the constant. So if you need to do whatever you need to do during the day and then take classes at night, you can still do that. If you need to sit down by the river walk on your, your lunch break and take classes, you can do that. So students that are enrolled in this program are counted present at school as long as they're meeting the expectations of their learning plan. Every student will have a personalized learning plan and if you have to log X number of hours per week, as long as you're meeting that expectation and moving and progressing forward in a positive way in your coursework, then there's no problem. So this is something that is really going to free up some time. You know, if you're looking at students that are maybe um, um, high school students that are parents, you know, um, young ladies that may mm -hmm. uh, have children while in school and they have all those expectations of child care and raising their child, they can do that, work from home online and still receive support from the school. So just a lot of options. Oh, that's to, awesome. Oh, it's a fantastic program. It's just a lot of options to help kids continue to get what they deserve, which is a diploma. And, uh, and work within those, those boundaries of what typically would have been something that would have made them quit school. Okay. Now, my, one of my bigger questions, though, is let's just say hypothetically 30% of students in high school decide to take this program as opposed to going into the classroom. How will that affect um, the student-to-teacher ratio? Will classrooms, will, will the students... Uh, you know what I mean? Will they still get the, the absolutely? Jane. I, see, I see where you're going with that. Attention so, they need. Or well, and so here's what happens. You know, based on the growth of this program and what the needs in this community become. That's what we're going to tailor this program to do. Uh, it's a very fluid program. So our goal right now is we're trying to get 10 kids signed up by the uh, middle of next week um, because we want to show our board and our district and our community that we're serious and we're committed about this and we want to get this first group in. Uh, then we'll see what the challenges and, and expectations are so that we can start planning and building for exactly that. Uh, in, the, in a previous district where I've worked, we had 100 kids in the program. Uh, probably out of that 100, we probably saw 20 that came on a very limited basis just to do some exams and receive support. So we had about 80 students that came on a modified schedule at some point during the day. So we had a standalone center. Mm -hmm. Kids would come, you know, two to three times a week, three to four hours a pop. They'd come in, they'd get their work, they'd get their assistance and whatever remediation and tutoring that they needed. But then they were free to go and do the rest of their day, whether it was a job or training or what have you. So... Uh, I think that would be a great problem to have if we had, mm -hmm. you know, 300 kids that wanted to participate in this. But see, it's not just bound to students that are currently enrolled in Tuscaloosa City Schools. So there are students that live within our city uh, attendance zone uh, that may be in church school, home school, or private school. Mm -hmm. uh, so those students would have an opportunity to make application and be a part of the process, too. Uh, so, you know, say you left for whatever reason, uh, you had some travel expectations 
positions that you wanted to do or or, or maybe you wanted to do some job shadowing and, and could make it meet the attendance expectations of normal school or traditional school mm-hmm. and you went to a private school, well, that student would be eligible to come back, make application, be a part of this program and still have the flexibility to shadow and mentor and, and, and be part of the, the workforce. And, 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 really, and that's really what you want. You want kids engaging in the careers and opportunities that they want to do in the future and they can dabble in that and have experiences in that now. Okay, and this may seem like a really crazy question because I know that you said that this program will be um, great for those that might have other activities, you know, athletes or whatever. Would a person that is not in the program right now, let's just say there is a dropout, and they say, you know what, the classroom is just not for me, but I think I can do this. Would that person be allowed to participate in extracurricular activities? Well, first of all, the the Alabama Athletic Association sort of guides what it is you have to do to be eligible to participate. So every child that made application, we would then defer to that Athletic Association handbook to see if they met those expectations, one of which being living in that attendance zone and, and passing a certain number of courses in the previous semesters to be eligible. So we'd have to go through that Athletic Association process. Mm -hmm. But let me tell you, this if a student is enrolled full-time in a school district and is attending at home online and meeting his personalized learning plan absolutely that child is a viable candidate to play sports so let's use this scenario so say a student is and then we'll use central high school as the example since we started with central say a student is enrolled in the ib program and the AP program and dually enrolled at Shelton State at Central High School, but is an outstanding baseball player. Mm -hmm. That child lives in Central's attendance zone and he takes takes one or two courses in the International Baccalaureate program, one or two courses in AP, and then one or two courses in dual enrollment. That child is absolutely eligible to play tennis or baseball or basketball or football at Central High School, pending they make the team, of course. You know, Mm -hmm. coaches make that decision. But that child would be a viable candidate to participate in extracurricular. Sounds like this is a great program. It's a great plan, Jade. It's a great plan. (laughs) I mean, really. And right now you're looking for how many students? We're trying to get 10 kids signed up by the 29th of uh, September. And, uh, And really, we're just trying to close out our fiscal year and do all the things that we need to do. But we really want to have a, a, a base group of at least 10 students to work with and, and kind of get familiarized with what the needs and expectations will be in Tuscaloosa City and start building our program and eventually a standalone virtual center in the future. Sounds great. I'm excited to see what happens. So am I. So, so am I. You can contact us at the central office at uh, 205 seven five nine thirty seven hundred uh my name is terry roller you can leave a message for me and we'll get back with you and uh visit our website at uh, tuscaloosa city schools uh, dot com and there'll be some links you can click on and do an initial interest um, page to fill out and and that'll kick some information to us and we'll contact you and see if you're a viable candidate to be a part of our virtual program Great. Well, I look forward to hearing more about this in the future, and uh, you have a great day. We'll keep you posted. All right, thanks. Thank you.